Live from Shadowmere Studios, this is the Talking Box Podcast. Good to the last drop. Ew. Mm. <laughs> That's gross, Dave. Yeah. You Ooh. nasty. Well, you gotta whatever. squeeze every bit of content. Yeah. You know? Into your mouth. <laughs> into your mouth. Squeeze um, it myself. I'm Jason. Yeah, and that's Justin. Yeah, that's me. And Is it? Jeremy Adam. Me yeah. Adam. And I'm your host, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey. You did something different. No. Is it your it's shirt? Ears? It's his hair. Are no. You? I was gonna say shirt, but it just. Yeah. It is his hair. I did. I cut off my hair. I donated my hair. To, All right. To wigs for kids. How's uh, how's that high horse feel? Pretty good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you walk out of there like I'm better? I'm better than this. So you get you donated your salt and pepper hair uh-huh. to wigs for kids. Yep. All Are right. they gonna like leave it salt and pepper? Or are they gonna, I have no like... idea. <laughs> I assume. I why not though? Like well, I feel like they should. What? Kids with cancer are getting free wigs. I don't think they're they're like oh one's got gray in it. I bet they're like. This is fucking awesome. Well, I mean, they're probably excited about the hair part, but do you want to give like a kid like, man, I got hair again, but now I just feel old. Yeah, he's gonna be like well, a, making me feel bad. He's gonna That's be like fine. a fifteen-year-old <laughs> professional in like a suit and tie. Yeah. He's gonna be like a CEO of a major corporation. I'm ten, around. but I feel All like slicked I'm back. With yeah. his, <laughs> with it could it could work out for some kids. with his yeah, silver and gray. Yeah, it'd give him a lot more respect in school. Absolutely. I, feel like. I mean, they'd probably dye it. But it's like, why would they? I mean, it's it's, it's silver like, greatness. Why do they need a diet? I don't know. Are they overweight? God damn. It. <laughs> that actually brings me to a question that uh, I actually put on Facebook earlier today. But since this is going to show up way later, uh, I'll ask it on the on the show. Dan, I'll ask you guys, what is? Do you have a favorite charity? And audience, do you have a favorite charity? And if so, put it in the comments. Jason, I mean, you have a favorite to be charity? terribly selfish. I am my favorite charity. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's it's a long road. We've got a long road ahead before we get everything worked out <laughs> and yeah. in some kind of a, an uplifting direction. But we're, we're putting most of our funds towards the, the right goals. Oh, yeah? There's a little bit getting tied up in bureaucracy. And, right. and some warlords occasionally will come in and warlords. squander everything yeah. on, like, Pizza parties, things like that. But yeah. for the most part, is this, is this like a third grade charity? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a third grade warlord appetite. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you have a favorite charity? You know, I honestly don't. Mm. I, I've never been in the position to like give to charity, right? So I've always operated under the uh, the mindset that if I can better myself, mm -hmm. maybe at some point I can start bettering okay. the lives of others. Yeah. But right now, it's like giving away my money is like from one poor person to another. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, okay. in the grand scheme of things. Right. Jimmy, Ann? I don't. But I also, like Justin, I don't have money to right. give. You know, I'm... All right. So we're all shitty people yeah. except <laughs> for Dave. I've never, I've never given to a charity except for like uh, Humane Society. Mm hmm. Uh, and then I do <clears throat> donate to uh, the Kidney Foundation, uh, like clothing and stuff, because I don't give to Goodwill because that's a private company, mm -hmm. and I think that it's well, it's genius, but it's bogus. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna up, uh, uplift a private company by donating to them. Okay. Now, see, now I have donated my hair one time when I had long hair. I donated that when I chopped it all off. Yeah. Other than that, I mean, I I do typically give a dollar when they ask. At the grocery store, right, or at the Panda Express, if they, do you want to donate your forty three cents to the charity? Yeah, round it yeah. up to the next dollar. And I, I've done that, that on several occasions, mm -hmm. uh, like restaurants dollar or something here, that'll round there. up for right. a charity or whatever. Like I often yeah. will. There's do probably that. nothing wrong with it. I, 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 I mean, it is question, the laziest but... way to be charitable. <laughs> it, but it is. It works for my lifestyle. Yeah. I feel like it's probably a very successful way, though. Oh, yeah. Like to. To just accrue like a quarter from a bunch of people out of convenience, rather oh, <laughs> yeah, rather than to ask, <laughs> <laughs> rather than to, to ask yeah. for money and for them to be like, well, I don't really have 
a proper donation, but in large quantities, right. a quarter a person is an amazing donation. Like Ronald McDonald we're, House or yeah. Yeah. No, we're take gonna, a penny, leave We're going to pass around a cup in a second to get donations to the charity to clean up the studio that Jason just dropped Monster all over. We'll just um, get Carlos to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no one's seen Carlos. He's been gone. For I haven't seen Carlos just... since Roger disappeared. We we um, we gave up on that. Yeah, I I asked the question, but I don't have a favorite charity either. I've you know other than donating my hair, I've never really done a lot of charity stuff. But that's something I would like talking about to kind of get into is is some more charitable stuff and getting out there in the community. Yeah. Um, one of the things is that uh, I found, and actually uh, Essen and Brian turned me on to this. There's a, a thing called Humble Bundle. Humble and bundle. it's something you can find online, and uh, it's typically it started off as like almost like a, essentially a subscription service for video games on or for your PC, but they've also started adding uh, books and software and stuff like that. And so, actually, at this moment, we're downloading um, some new video editing software, and through Humble Bundle. And the cool thing about Humble Bundle is that when you when you do this, you pay whatever you want. Um, it's like you pay if you pay anything, you get you know these two or three softwares, and if you pay you know up you know this much or more, you get these softwares, and if you pay this much or more, you get these. And but so then, it's kind of tiered by donation. Yeah, but you can but you can obviously pay more than that if you want. But the cool thing is, no matter how much you pay, you can designate if that's going to go to the manufacturers of the of the software, or to charity, or to Humble Bundle itself to keep going. And you can you can kind of it's got little sliders so you can have like some of it to this one and some of it to this one. You can put all of it in, into charity or all of it into the the software manufacturer. You know whatever you want to do. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, this time we're going to be donating to St. Jude's uh, Children's Hospital. Cool. So what well, uh, about that? Yeah. Now, see, like I've Domino's always found it funny. does a lot with them. I've yeah. always found it funny with charity. You know, like. People like us, normal Joe Schmoes, like we've all said that we don't have a favorite charity. We don't really give that much. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, no one's going to fault us for that. No one's yeah. going to be like, you know what? These guys are pieces of shit for not having a favorite charity. Right. I'm sure some people will say that, but not everybody. Yeah. I do find it funny how celebrities are like completely like that. That rule does not apply to them in any way, shape or form. Like they'll go on game shows and stuff like that and. Even if they're a broke ass celebrity that hasn't done anything in mm. years, they're playing for charity. Yeah, and it's always about like what charity are they giving to? It's it's expected of these people who are have like a higher station in life. Yeah. I guess you would say to give, and I, I've always found that very interesting and like kind of played in my mind. Mm. Like if I ever became a celebrity, what would be and, my donation? And I have to wonder. I, and I assume that the, the way it works is typically these celebrities pick a, a charity mm -hmm. or start a charity based on something close to them. Yeah. Like you know, if they have friends that died of cancer, they have friend you know with with this ailment, or if they have a uh, special thing with animals or anything like that. Uh, Netflix actually just released something called Seth Rogen's Hilarity for Charity. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you guys watched. I haven't that seen yet. it yet. I saw it on the. Um, on the and, it's it's kind of like that same thing, you know. Seth Rogen's charity is uh, for Alzheimer's. It's like mm. all about Alzheimer's stuff, and they raise money through comedy shows and yeah. all this ridiculous wackiness. And then they will pay for like care for like so many hours a week of care okay. for people around the world. Like, hey, you know, here's enough money for you to have 15 hours of assisted care for a year, like, and just okay. doing really cool stuff like that. Yeah. But there's also a lot of dick and fart and shit jokes in there, <laughs> so it's entertaining for people like me. Right. Yeah. It's definitely worth a watch. It's a hard start. Right. Really? Real difficult to start. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and say that. And they, they say that in the special, like, yeah. it was really risky to start the show this way, mm. um, but it pays off. Okay. It's, I'll it's, check it's, it out. It's a, good, it's a good, good watch. Yeah. Gives you a few feel-good points. That's cool. Speaking of Netflix, I started watching... Uh, the Magicians recently? The Magicians. And I don't know if you've seen it. I watched it... the first two episodes okay. today. Oh wow. In Ooh. preparation for this show. Yeah. That's because you knew that we were actually gonna I was gonna mention it. I yeah. knew you were gonna mention it, yeah. Yeah, I, started, I just had a feeling. I started a while back uh Magical. with 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 my girlfriend Jackie mm -hmm. and she's I think she's seen the entire first season, but there's three seasons out currently, I think. Mm -hmm. And now I'm up to maybe halfway through the first season. It's pretty good. It's like a 
This is sci-fi original, right? But it's I think it's so. got two seasons on Netflix, I, I believe, right? I think I think they just put their third on. Did they? Or, or maybe they just started their third on TV. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, um, see, now I noticed when we were watching this, like mm-hmm. you told me there was a sci-fi original, and I've always had an idea about sci-fi shows. For the most part, it's living up to it as yeah. a, as a sci-fi show. The one part that I was not anticipating is all the fuck bombs they're dropping. Yeah, they drop some fuck bombs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not. A kid I don't know. Show. If, I don't know if it like this is not softens for... it, adding bomb to the end of fuck, <laughs> but it feels right. Yeah, this is an adult Harry Potter is kind of what's what's going yeah, on there. I like, get I get the like Dawson's Creek meets Harry Potter. Yeah, uh, this is if if there was a, a college version of Hogwarts. Essentially, it's like kids doing drinking and doing drugs and fucking. And saying that they're fucking, mm-hmm. and you know, and saying fucking, yeah. No. I, I feel like it's basically all that goodwill we had at the beginning of the show <laughs> gone. It's, gone. It's <laughs> pandering directly to the Harry Potter audience that oh, of grew yeah. up as you know, as a kid, they mm-hmm. were introduced to Harry Potter, and of course, the movies are two years apart or whatever. So, watching the 115 different Harry Potter movies. <laughs> they they grew up into adults, yeah. and so this show is basically, you know. I feel like directly marketed for yeah. that audience. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's a, it, it does have some CW kind of camp though in there too. Like it's definitely sort of a teen drama. The lead character, like kind of we stuff, we but. made the observation that the lead character had a very like angsty haircut. Yeah. In the first episode, like it just you know like the the shag like just keep, barely keep it out of my eyes. Yeah, right. And then I guess like they felt it wasn't enough so they upped the ante and in the second episode it was like that much longer and you could only ever see one eye. Yeah. It was just oh. well, yeah. very very angst driven. Mm-hmm. Um No one understands me. I feel Some like phase. I saw the name Sarah Gamble. Uh-huh. And I think that's supernatural, isn't it? Didn't I she believe, work on I Supernatural? I she was a executive or a showrunner or something for. Yeah, I think she wrote a little bit. I think she produced. I, th- I don't know. I think she did some stuff. Yeah. For Supernatural, and it and it has, kind of, uh, visually, it kind of has a supernatural kind of yeah. flow to it. It definitely has some darker tints to it and stuff like that, and but I, I'm enjoying it so far, and the, it does for the most part. I enjoy it for the overarching story of like there's some crazy shit going on. And very few people know about it, and like they have to deal with the situation. But then there's also a kind of thing of the week thrown in, like a, a teen drama issue of the week. Okay, kind that of was thing. how Supernatural ran. I don't know. You've yeah. seen Supernatural, right? Oh, yeah. Where there was like the main story arcs, mm-hmm. but then every couple episodes they would be like, "All right, let's get back to the roots of the show." Yeah, and just do a little fun, brotherly love, fun right. side episode of them hunting something. And yeah. then we'll come back. To the story arc later. We're joining Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's, is it, is there it a is, supernatural episode that it's is, a yeah, supernatural Scooby- episode where they get sucked into like a TV Scooby Doo and oh. uh, yeah, they just join a Scooby Doo episode. That's dim, weird. I've not seen. Dim, that. Dim, I haven't seen any of the current season of Supernatural actually. But I, I like haven't seen. I haven't seen a single episode of no. Supernatural. Me I know either. Jason and I used to watch it <clears> together <throat> when we when we were roommates a long time ago. Um, and uh, we always enjoyed it. I've, I've, I've always thought it was a great show. I've always been told it's something like you have to watch. Like mm-hmm. if like being into the things that we're into, like it would be something that I would enjoy. I just yeah. haven't like taken that time to watch it. But I have been doing this thing lately where I'm going and watching things that I haven't seen before. Yeah, things that are a little bit older that I know are supposed to be good. Right. But I'm going back a little bit further than I think I might have should. Like, I watched L.A. Confidential, started okay. watching Heat, hadn't seen Heat before. Heat's a great movie. I've heard it's great. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. Like Val oh. Kilmer Heat? Like, yeah. the, like Val, Val Kilmer, Kilmer Heat. De Niro Pacino? Never seen it. Yeah. I watched The Negotiator last week. Okay. Samuel L. Yeah. Good shit, man. <laughs> Just catching up on some 90s movies yeah, that I should have watched. Movies, yeah. Actually, it's, it's funny. I, I, start, I tried to watch... Um, my, my girlfriend and I both liked uh, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, mm. that TV show that was out back in the 90s. You tried to watch and, the movie? And No, I've seen the movie. I love the movie. It's, okay. it's campy and weird and stupid, <laughs> but, it's, uh, but it's awesome. But uh, we went. We tried to watch. We were going to start over from the beginning of Buffy the Vampire Slayer and watch it. They took it off of Netflix. It's not right. there anymore. They took so, a few big things yeah. off of Netflix. I mean, they, they apparently you know, they, took Family Guy. And they buy them for a really. certain amount of years of contract or term, yeah. you know, term of contract or whatever. Syndication. 
And once the ownership drops off, show yeah. properties the moment that contract's up, like mm -hmm. they're Which pulling their library. Another thing we found out about Netflix. So a lot of people know that Netflix has, has is different depending on where you are, like in mm -hmm. what country you're in, and so um, there's you know because of licensing stuff and like you know you can't watch certain things in certain countries, but people are getting around that by using a VPN to like a virtual private network to go and, and say, oh, I'm in England. I'm mm -hmm. going to watch English Netflix. Netflix. Uh, apparently Netflix caught on to that shit and they shut it down hard. Like, like if you try to do that I now, bet they were going to be like getting all kinds of fines and shit. Yeah, they were, they were like, it, it pops up now where it's like, you seem to be uh, on a VPN or behind a proxy. You're going to need to turn that shit off. And it's like, oh, well, I guess I'm not watching this today. So. Hmm. So, Interesting. Yeah. Well, they are they are tied. Uh, the I noticed that a lot of the Netflix originals, if you watch all the way through the crediting, mm -hmm. uh, you know they obviously they'll do all of the American English crediting, and then you'll get into every other country that they release right. that Netflix original into, and it's a pretty diverse, uh, sure. you know group of credits just yeah. like voice acting and production and editing and stuff for all of these other yeah. uh, Netflix country affiliations but there's Marketing. like there, there are ways around it too in a sense that like there's the Netflix algorithm like it chooses all the things that you look at and you watch and decides yeah. what it's going to show you um, but if you start watching things like a little out of the normal I can find some of those you know those um fringe kind of shows that you wouldn't normally watch mm -hmm. it'll start opening up other things so like i like watching anime like mm -hmm. anime's fun so i watched a uh, a netflix anime not a netflix anime just a regular anime that netflix happened to have made a movie about okay but the movie they made was japanese language it was like a japanese netflix original yeah so i watched that now I get all kinds of Japanese TV shows, mm -hmm. all kinds of Japanese movies, like things that aren't really marketed towards me at right. all. But if it's Japanese, they're showing it to me. Like, you <laughs> yeah. like Japanese stuff. Here's a, a Japanese a, soap opera. You got a new checkbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> now, a demographic like, report. all of this regional stuff is opening up to me. I watched a Spanish comedian one time and I didn't realize that it was Spanish language until I'd already turned it on because yeah. the title was in English. Yeah. So I turned that on. Now I can see all of the Spanish language <laughs> stand-up specials. They're all available to me. Yeah. And it's just really funny how that works. Like you yeah. watch something in German, guess what? There's a whole bunch of German shit you can look at now. I'm sure. So like experiment with it. Find those weird things but and I, but I have to assume it's still like Yes, you're getting a whole bunch of stuff that's in Japanese, but it's still that's the Japanese stuff that's available in America. Yeah, right. They just um, brought it up to the top yeah. of your so list. I'm sure you could have you could have like searched for that at any point and found right. it. Right. Um, I, th I think it's just it's it's odd to me that like, yeah, you could probably search for, it, but not all of the stuff you're going to search for. Some of it's like really out of nowhere, yeah. like girly Japanese soap operas are like popping up and I've never watched anything remotely soap opery on my Netflix but yeah. it's shown me these live action not even animes just live action Japanese right. well you gotta go watch them now I have to uh, I see what that few. opens up for you yeah. if you wanna see the <laughs> the, di the diversity of Netflix uh, check out Netflix original Ultimate Beastmaster. Yeah. It's like a Ninja you, Warrior kind of thing. Yeah, I've talked you. about it on Talkie Box before. Uh, the the very first season had Terry Crews. Okay. And it was pretty hilarious. Yeah. I'm going to be honest Wasn't with you. it Stallone? Wasn't he a producer? Uh, yeah, he's a producer for, for both seasons. Uh, they got a new guy, um, a, a new duo in the second season, and it's still pretty funny. Um, but... Mainly, it's it's the other commentators, mm -hmm. the the commentators that are like the Koreans and the the Brazilians and the the Spanish and yeah. all of them are what really make the show because like they'll cut to them yeah. and their personification of like what their audience expects them to act. Okay, and so you can be like, wow, these <laughs> those that's over the top, like. Yeah. You know, we expect a certain amount of like 
pop from commentators, mm. but you know, like in Korea, they want they want you to like pizzazz, yeah, emote yeah. every <laughs> single thing that occurs, like just breaking down into right. pretend sobbing and stuff. And well, I, I like I've noticed something in like talking on that, like the way that they emote in different things, like watching anime and Japanese live action, like you realize that. We kind of take on characteristics and mannerisms of what we watch on TV. Like, we all do that. We repeat lines. Like, we kind of, like, take poses and stances like you would in a movie. And Japanese people do the exact same way, but they're, like, basing it off of anime. Mm -hmm. So you get these really, like, striking poses that seem really weird and rigid to us. Like, if I just walked up to Jason and be like, hey, Jason, how you doing? Like, that would look really weird. Yeah. In Japan, that's totally okay. Like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, cool. Catch you later. Let me just give you the peace sign through my eyes. That's totally cool. You know, like, give, like, the long thumbs up. That happens a lot. Yeah. As that's, a, like, that's a real thing. As though, like, a I'm freeze ready. frame has occurred in yeah. the moment that, like, you hit. Or, like, a, <laughs> like a twinkle, yeah. like, blast occurs. Like, yeah. in America, we like, all right, I'm ready. We do that little fist swing. In yeah. Japan, I'm ready is this motion. So you see them doing that in live action. So, like, all right. Let's go do it. Like, it, that's just what they've been looking at. So right. that's how they're acting. And because they're so good at, at uh, advancing technology, there's a good chance the first augmented reality is going to be to like accentuate different things like that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. so that you'll have the glasses on and your friends can like give you a smile and like, <laughs> Cling. Yeah. It'll, like it'll flash in your eyes. Yeah. You're like, oh, oh. <laughs> blind. Yeah, the, the the anime AR where it just turns everything in your life slightly anime. Yeah. I think that'd be badass as shit. I'm gonna be right? straight like up. Your your friends just has slightly flaming hair yeah, while you're I'm talking turn on to giant them. Giant eye mode. Yeah, their eyes get really big until they <laughs> close, and they're just lines. Yeah. And just, uh, <laughs> if they take a certain <laughs> stance, you'll see like a magical costume come on for them. Like yeah. you. I'd watch it. Yeah. I'd play that game. Pulse the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. How are you doing today? <laughs> ha! Yeah. You can do that. Yeah. In America, we'd look ridiculous. Like yes. I just did. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that when Brian goes to make the, the thumbnail for this episode, it's going to be some of that. Some of that. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> Bling! All kinds of Bling! Shit. Yeah. Ha ha! <laughs> Yeah. Oh, good times. Yeah. Good times. Now, speaking of Netflix, we, we talked about like... Uh, Netflix the, a lot? The yeah, Netflix you're right. <laughs> Marvel shows a lot. Yes, we have. Daredevil and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, The Defenders mm -hmm. and Jessica Jones and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Hulu also has a Marvel show out that's part of the MCU called Runaways. And now, is this a part of the MCU or is it a part of like the Legion universe? No, it's the universe. MCU. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And uh, it's... I, I know that... I was talking to Jason earlier. He hasn't seen it. I don't know if you guys have mm -hmm. seen it. It's actually pretty damn cool. Like it's it's uh, for those who don't know from the comics, or whatever. It's it's about a group of kids who essentially find out spoilers that uh, their parents are villains, basically. Um, in the in the comics, I think that's how it goes. In the in the in the show, their parents are part of like sort of a cult kind of thing, and they the kids start learning that they each have some kind of ability or power or something, and you know a lot of it based on their parents. And so it's uh, it's about these kids figuring out like, oh, our parents are like bad people and what the fuck do we do about it? You know, should we turn them in? Should we fight them? Should we just like act normal, as normal as we can having seen Hello, seen. mother. Yeah. <laughs> and so far it's pretty, I'm about halfway in, my Hulu's not not working correctly anymore for whatever reason, so I'm Hulu. hoping to get back into it. Yeah, thanks Hulu. That's why we talk about Netflix. Hulu. <laughs> Get yeah. your shit together. But uh, I'm about four or five episodes in. I'm really excited to watch more of it. Um, but it's it's pretty cool, and I highly recommend it. What's the uh, age group of the main stars? Uh, they are around, I think, sixteen to eighteen. Uh, are the are the main kids? Uh, one of them might be like fifteen or something like that. The younger one. Um, and then, but it's mostly like. One of the kids I've seen before in something else, but that's it. The others are pretty much unknown actors, as far as I can tell. Um, and then a couple of the parents I've seen before. One of them being James M James Marsters. Marsters, I think? 
From Who Buffy? Was, from Buffy. He played yeah, Spike James in, Marsters, in, yeah. in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. He's also been in some other stuff. Like, he was on uh, Torchwood at one point. Yeah, he's he's Spike. Um, That's who he is. Yeah. In fact, he played, uh, he played a live version of Piccolo in a Dragon Ball Z movie. We he don't did. talk about that. <laughs> he did do that. Holy yeah. shit, I forgot all about that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> to forget about it again. <laughs> But I've always enjoyed him as an actor, and he and he does a good job in this show from from what I've seen so far. So, you know. there's a, a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline this month. Yeah, a lot of things to get excited about. So I think the first one that I, I'm sure everybody already knows about is Avengers: Infinity, Infinity War got mm-hmm. moved up. Yeah, its release date got moved up. I think by so, one or two weeks. Yeah, now it's at the end of, eight, of this April month. the twenty sixth, twenty seventh. Is when that comes out. I'm sure the sneak preview is like think, three days before it. Though, you think it was sure. to mess with their competitors? You think somebody was trying to do like there? A, it, there are no competitors anymore. Well, well I mean, like, just a drain or whatever, like a little it bit. It was of their probably numbers. for maximum impact. Like, all right, something else is releasing that might pull from us. This is the weekend to have the biggest weekend of all time. Because its like, original release was really close to Deadpool two. Yeah, oh, was so it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. so they there they we wanted, go. See, I knew it was something. Yeah. Where like they're the still going to make billions, but they're trying to break records with this, mm-hmm. so they're not trying to have any competition. Yeah, but that's coming out. Well, we've all seen trailers and sneak peeks. It looks like it's going to be incredible. Oh yes. Mm-hmm. There's two other things to get pretty excited about. Yeah, Legion mm-hmm. season two is coming. I, it's still already, want to see that. I still haven't seen it, but it's I'm already coming excited. out, isn't it? Has it come out yeah, already? I thought it was already out. It might already be out. Well, I don't know if it's. If you're not excited about it, you should be excited in about it. episodes. Now that I don't know, I just heard people talking because it's about it's it. FX, so I think it's a weekly. Yeah, yeah. it'll be weekly episodic. Yeah, I'll so I'm probably like, gonna hold off a little one, bit. One or two episodes, I think, is out now. So today's April 12th. Uh-huh. By the time this episode actually hits the internet, some of this stuff might be out already. <laughs> Some yeah. of it. Including Avengers. The yeah. last thing... Go yeah. see Super Troopers 2. That probably <laughs> just came out. <laughs> the last thing yeah. that I personally am really, really excited about, and it's it's a little sentimental for me, mm-hmm. Westworld Season 2. Oh, yeah. April 22nd. Significant because it was the first television show we talked about <laughs> on, on the show, show yeah. was mm-hmm. Westworld. And we but finally are getting ago. Season 2 yeah. a, a year and a half later. It's coming out on the 22nd, mm-hmm. and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> Are you going to watch it? I'm going to watch it, but Spoiler, how? they don't nuke all the androids. Mm. Here's, here's my <laughs> predicament, all right? <laughs> we come from an age of binge watching. Yeah. Binge watching is the best. That's what we do now. That's how I fell in love with the show The Walking Dead. I binged watched the first two seasons, and I fell in love. And yeah. I found... That with shows like The Walking Dead and with shows like Westworld, there is a tiny bit of frustration that comes with that excitement mm. when you don't get resolution to certain characters that you wanted to see or like actually know what's going to happen after a cliffhanger. Yeah, because they can compartmentalize and decide what to show you in each episode. So you get a cliffhanger one week, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait. Next episode come out. You watch the whole episode and you get nothing from the last episode. You're like, God damn it! Yeah. I have to wait a whole other week to find out what happens. Because they're telling parallel stories. They're telling parallel stories. And it's exciting and it's still the show is still phenomenal, but it's frustrating. You know, it's much more involving to watch the show all at once. So I'm battling with myself on Legion and Westworld Mm -hmm. on whether or not uh, one, I'm going to rewatch the first season of both. (laughs) I think that goes without saying. Yeah. But am I going to wait? To a point where I can binge watch a few episodes and then wait some more? Mm. Or am I going to watch it week by week? You, like most Americans, will wait for about four or five episodes. Then you will give in and you will watch, you know, binge watch like three or four. And then you'll try and just put it on the back burner. But from that point on, you'll start watching it like... On demand the next night after it's aired from that point on. And then you're just like, son of a bitch. Yeah. Just say, so, I just want it now! That's how I felt with Preacher. Because, like, when the second season came out, I'm like, yeah, I'm really excited about this. Missed the first episode. I'm like, okay, okay, no, no biggie. I can just go watch it. Missed the second episode. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. I, it's only two episodes. Yeah. Man, the entire season's already. Dang. I guess I should just go so watch season, it all at once. Season two of Preacher's out? Uh, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't know that. It's been done for quite some time. I, I have neglected know. to watch it. Is it on Netflix? Maybe. If it is, I have to watch it. Mm-hmm. 
Cause Cause I, I, I really, really loved the first season. Yeah, yeah. I really like the first season. I like the book it was based on. Mm-hmm. I have um, not read that though. Yeah, I think I think I have it. I think um, I have. I think I have. I think I have. Yeah, it might be I have so many comics upstairs. Like, <laughs> speaking of comics and The Walking Dead, because those are the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but not. there's uh, some trailers out right now right? for a new Walking Dead video game. Okay. Coming out, and it looks fucking insane. Who's right. making it? Uh, Overkill. Um, it is uh, so far they're only showing cinematic trailers. <sighs> okay. But it's like hyper realism in these trailers. Like they're gorgeous. Like yeah. the first like twenty seconds of the thing, I wasn't sure if it was live action or not. Oh wow. Um, so it looks really, really good. It looks really in depth. Apparently, there's like four or five playable characters, mm-hmm. and it's. The Walking Dead. You're getting into the Walking Dead world. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Do we know like what kind of style of game it is? Is it like Telltale's point and click thing? No, I don't it... think so. I have okay. no idea. I know it's not a Telltale. I know it okay. is definitely going to be an action game. I am not a fan of Telltale games. No, no, I'm not either. You know, I keep seeing them come out. Hmm. Uh, I saw what I believe to be the most pointless Telltale game. I saw it the other day. Yeah, which is. I was scrolling through my app store looking for a fun, fresh game to play, and I came across. Minecraft story mode, oh, yeah. a telltale game. Uh, so a game where you can build anything that you want, mm-hmm. now suddenly you're going to throw a story in it and take away all of the elements that make that game any fun at yeah. all mm-hmm. and make it just like every other telltale game, The Wolf Among Us or right. Batman or... Lego regular guy, a telltale <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, like it's, <laughs> with Wolf Among Us, uh, Kate played that. And I've seen I've seen that one, and that's the only one I've seen so far where I was like, okay, because like that. with Telltale, it has to be a certain like aspect to it. Like mm-hmm. they're Walking Dead, I think that works fine. Like I'm not into it, but I think it works. You know, The Wolf Among Us works, mm. but then they get like these other themes, like for example, the Tales from the Borderlands. That does not work <laughs> because Borderlands, you know. How they fast. took a real fun game yeah. and made it into a <laughs> exactly. less fun game. Because, yeah. like, you know, how fast-paced Borderlands is, you know, with all the shooting, all the, you know, just running around, dodging and everything. But then it's just like, click. Yep. Click. Ha-ha! Yeah, that was funny! See, that, that was Borderlands humor right there, guys. <laughs> they're, they're trying to sell off of branding alone when they should just stick to good storytelling because that's the only thing they have going for them is that it's good storytelling with a little touch of you being the person sort of feeling involved in the story see i feel like what they're making the mistake is they're just trying to skin the same game over and over and over again with new skins i've only ever seen one video game franchise do that successfully and that's lego yeah i've Enjoyed every Lego game I've ever played. Yeah. They're all the same fucking game. Oh, yeah. Except they are the same game with different abilities based on your characters, but they're the same game with the same objectives, and I have a blast with every one of them. Although Except Lego for Rock Band. Does and that one. They do change it up just a little bit. Like every so often there is some kind of I mean, you know, Rock dynamic Band. change. Yeah, like they, for they, the they have like a, they have like a dynamic change, but it's But oh yeah, like I get what you mean, like I still play. I see a Lego game announced, and I'm like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go buy that." Yeah, yeah why wouldn't I play a Lego game like Lego Star Wars mm-hmm. games? Holy shit, those are fun! Yeah, Marvel Lego games, oh, yeah. those are a lot of fun too. So the, the Harry wa- Potter Lego games, you're damn right, they're fun. The, the Walking <laughs> the Incredibles, Dead, we'll find out. <laughs> the Walking Dead Telltale, I feel like it sells. The um, mm-hmm. the the other story based. Telltales. Uh, I played a a Game of Thrones. Yeah. Telltales. That I was mildly impressed by, like how accurately they kind of followed the darkness of the storyline mm-hmm. and like how messed up the situation was. Uh, and so, like, because uh, I think you actually started on the day of the Red Wedding. Uh, I think I that's right. Was yeah. was like where you start, and so like. You're the only person that lives from that that event. Right. Spoilers. Uh, yeah, spoiler. Spoiler for that game that came out five years ago. Yeah. And, and that the, show that yeah, came the show. out. Oh. See, like, spoiler my, for that book that came out five years ago. My, my problem with ago, Telltale games whatever. isn't that the games aren't fun. You know, they're, they're entertaining. They're what they're supposed to be. My issue is, is that, in my opinion, it's just a downloadable game. Like, I can get Batman Telltale for my Switch for $40. 
Why the fuck would I pay forty dollars for a Batman Telltale? You should. Game? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should never do that. N- no. Why would I? That's my issue with it. Yeah. I feel like it's a Telltale it's game is worth five dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's a five dollar game. Yeah. Sorry, Telltale. That's just how it is. Yeah. Five bucks. It's like if the bookmobile came through, like, <laughs> and you were like, "We've got some video books for sale." You'd be like, "Oh, is it, what do they I got?" Mean, I could they got maybe paying fifteen, twenty dollars if it's like a, you know, I better be getting a bundle or something. Yeah, like yeah. like it's like a game that's got like multiple things, like episode I, one, two, three, four. I need five. to be getting yeah. as many, if not double, the hours per dollar that I spend. If I'm spending twenty dollars, I want forty hours a game. Yeah. Or yeah. if it's like the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy, but through Golem's perspective or something <laughs> like. Where... I don't think I'd want that. Take Most my of money. Just in the dark. Yeah, just, just, just <laughs> where's my precious? Gollum sat in the dark. My precious, my precious. Gollum continued to sit in the dark. My precious, my precious. Gollum heard a sound. He looked over. He hunched back over, my precious, my precious. <laughs> now would there be DLCs to include The Hobbit? <laughs> Your DLC pack is downloaded. Bilbo Baggins added. <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, for the most part, they're, they're shitty games. It's story-driven. It's story only. <laughs> it's yeah. What, yeah. Like, I mean, you, sometimes you've got to say that the story can't be good. It's just the mm-hmm. format, just, you know. Yeah. Like, that does not... Well, it's like also just because like of how it is. Like I don't typically like those kinds of games. Like That's what kind of like you know steers me away from Telltale. It's like, I like being able to fully control you know, a character and like, all that stuff. But like it's just other games that are kind of like that. Like, for example, the Life is Strange games. Mm. Fucking love the Life is Strange games. But they're like the exact same format, you know. It's like... Mm. Kind of like that basic, you know, just limited movement, the choices. But it's just like, I have no interest in Telltale, but like, if someone talks shit about Life is Strange, I'll be like, all right, we're throwing down. Come on, let's do this. Well, well see, like, a- I feel like Telltales are kind of like dumbed down version of like those, you know, uh, build your own adventure kind mm-hmm. of things. Yeah. The, the one game that I've played that follows that format that was really, really highly acclaimed and should have been was Heavy Rain. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you're going to make a game where it's that story based mm-hmm. and like it's more about your decisions than controls and like you just throw in a mini game every now and again, mm-hmm. give me some realism. Like that's what mm-hmm. Heavy Rain really did was yeah. amazing animation, amazing deep like emotional story. Mm-hmm. You can kill off main characters. Like that game ends based on what the fuck you do. You can kill off main characters mm-hmm. by accident mm-hmm. and those characters are now that they're gone they're in the gone. story. They are dead. Whatever story arcs they had down the line, too bad. They're if done. anyone like interacted with them after they were dead, like there'd be certain things that would not be accessible to these other characters because like you need this character, but he's not there, so you just completely screwed over the rest of this person's storyline with that character. I had a detective get get killed in a trash compactor, so I lost him. And, and then I had compactor. a I had a, a woman. Uh, no, sorry, not a trash compactor. That was acid. No, it was a, a car, uh, a, a car, like a car crusher thing. Car crusher, oh. um, and then I had a reporter die in a burning building. So at the end of the game, I only had two characters left. Okay, apparently there's four characters. Yeah, there's, there's four characters. Four. Okay. I feel like there's more merit for those kinds of stories now that uh, uh, virtual units are coming to the market. I feel like. Uh, as as they are basically just immersive storytelling, I feel like putting that into a, a head unit and actually like being that character, A, they wouldn't need nearly as much processing because you're not having to sandbox it for them, uh, but you could still get all of the sensation of like yeah. moving through your favorite story elements or whatever, Gotham City or, or the, you know, the winter is coming or whatever right. you Westeros. know yeah what did i say winter is coming yeah, all right <laughs> That's so, what I meant. so i got my point across then. yeah um yeah. but lord of the north king of the north speaking of video games i found a list <laughs> uh the other day the 50 best video games of all time according to critics according uh, to critics and basically those critics are all on metacritic um I have it right here. Do you? I have oh. it right here. I have it right here. Cool. Follow along. Number 50. Yeah. Uh, Devil May Cry, which I never I never really played. 
Is it talking about like the franchise itself or the first the one? The first, first game. Yeah. yeah, these it this is, I, so I've this looked is through the games. I looked through the this this list and it has a lot of games from the, the same franchise. So. Okay. In um, a large American but, metropolis, a man named Dante, a private investigator of the supernatural, is seeking revenge for the death of his mother and brother. Mm. The world is waiting, for Dante is no ordinary man, and with his father's sword in hand, he must enter the demon realm and avenge mankind. Spoiler. 8.6 out of I do know it's one of uh, S and Brian's favorite games. Like when, when he was growing up, he was love and no, isn't some, that just uh, like a side scroll crime. slasher? No. I don't I think it's a three D slasher. Is it a three D slasher? It's a 3D slasher, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, it's like kinda like it's Castlevania. Yeah. yeah. You got Tony Hawk Pro Skater four. I thought Which the third one was supposed was to do good. better than that. Um, well, this, this is, is number 49. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else was the next one? Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which mm-hmm. I know Jason and I played a while back. Um, which, you know, I mean, it's it's like any other first-person shooter. Um, nothing real special about it. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy 9. Amazing game. We should probably Final just move to, like, game. the top. Fifteen. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Bioshock <laughs> Infinity, World of Goo. Because we're gonna get a lot of we're gonna get a lot of much re- repeats closer to that list, and we're gonna talk about franchises and things, and yeah. then it's gonna go through, and we're gonna be like, oh well, yeah. I'll, I'll go through and I'll find some notable ones. Uh, for example, Forty Three Portal Two. Mm-hmm. That's a great one. Which I never actually I played say that one. That's better than Bioshock um, Infinite, though. That was. This is by critics. The Last of Us, number 41. That needs to be a lot farther down. I've heard this is... I I have this game. I've played like the first like... I've played for maybe like two or three hours. Mm. Very fun game. It just happened to come out around the same time that another game I really wanted to play came out. Yeah. So this fell in the back. You said the Rock Climber game? No. What's the one that you had that was like a zombie game? Um... Because I thought it was The Last of Us, but apparently Last not. of Us is oh, a zombie-style uh, game. It's like the the zombie-style of The Last of Us. It's like there's a fungus, and this is a real fungus, called mm-hmm. the Cordyceps. Mm-hmm. And like that infects insects right now. Like like it just kind of... Basically, yeah, it turns them into zombies. Like okay. it mutates them, and like they don't really have control of their body anymore. Mm-hmm. The concept of the game is it's spread to humans. Okay. So like the enemies are like, it's all fungus-based. So mm-hmm. like, you know... You see, like, an area with lots of fungus, you have to put on a gas mask, otherwise you're going to breathe in those spores. Can we just spray bleach on them and be done with it? No. No. Well, fuck. Napalm. <laughs> I mean, if you have napalm, go for it. Because I mean, there was that one uh, zombie uh, game where it was, like, bees. Bees? <laughs> bees? Bees? Not bees. Bees? Mark? The one where they the ph- photographer at the mall. Oh, um... Dead Rising. Yeah. Bees? Yeah, that's the one. I'm pretty sure. Which, Dead Rising 4 is now out. Mm-hmm. Which I didn't realize they've made that many. I did not either. I thought that's um, one that's been out for like a year or two. At this maybe point. it has. I have no idea. Number 40 on the list, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Great game. Uh, which I never really got into that one. Oh, it's but good. Then, it's hard. That's the yeah. problem with Majora's mm-hmm. Mask was it was so much harder than Ocarina of Time mm-hmm. because you had that time limit. You had yeah. 72 hours to get shit done, and then you had to travel back in time three days. And do it all over And, and you lose progress. And the like, redundancy oh. is what you killed me. You lose some items. Mm-hmm. Like, but the You'll point keep your is, masks. You, the point of it is like you're trying, like, okay, I gotta, you know, I know how to do this now. I gotta make a mad dash to that the first day so gotcha. I can go okay. progress. But you keep some items, you lose some items, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just, a, like, that's what didn't, like, I didn't like get far into it just because it's like, Oh, I don't want to. Yeah. Keep See, doing I remember. This. I, I'm, I'm just gonna stop real quick. I, I've skipped very far ahead. Mm. But um, like, I remember when the PlayStation came out. I remember when the original PlayStation came out. I was blown away by the graphics. Yeah. And like, it just gave me this screenshot here of the number twenty nine. The very first Gran Turismo. The very first Gran Turismo. Yeah. And yeah. as a child, I can see why I thought this was so cool. Mm-hmm. As an adult who is experiencing much better technology these yeah. days, I don't know how I was <laughs> ever impressed this with this. This is it. garbage. I don't know how I was <laughs> ever impressed with this. Yeah. But I felt the same way when I looked at the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, yeah. whatever it was. That's how I feel with Spider Man. I mean, I, I grew up <laughs> in an 8 bit world. Yeah. So, like. Jason, I grew up when, like, the Nintendo came out. And, and, and before us was just like imagination yeah 
Um, let's see, 39 was uh, Link to the Past. Link to the Past. Which was probably one of my favorite Zelda games. It's a great game. Um, what number was that for Gran Turismo? 29. Yeah, number 37 for Gran Turismo 3. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Red Dead Redemption's in here. For that's um, great. It's, it's good. It's a really good game. Uh, I believe... They're supposed to be a second one. Yeah, releasing a second one. It should Which, be coming pretty soon. Red Dead Redemption um, was already isn't a that second Rockstar? game. Rockstar. Yeah, it's Rockstar. Because mm-hmm. uh, the the original game was Red Dead Revolver. Yeah. And they came out. And that, that was one. for the original Xbox, wasn't it? I think so. And then wrong, Redemption but... was 360. I want to yeah, say. Yeah, PlayStation 3. I think. And PlayStation. Uh, Vice City's on here. San mm-hmm. Andreas. Grand Theft Autos. Um, the Grand Theft Auto game. You, have you heard uh, recently, just a brief little segue, Grand Theft Auto V, released in 2013, has just surpassed $6 billion really? in sales. Is that including like sales of the game and then in-game sales? Mm-hmm. Okay. Six. That's how much money... Mm-hmm. Rockstar has made off yeah. of because they get they have some microtransaction stuff on their mm-hmm. online. Don't you they? could say some, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So six billion dollars of revenue on one game released five years ago. That's insane. Yeah. Well, a it's lot not as insane DLC. as oh, yeah. a lot as of how Skyrim was released seven years ago, but they're still releasing it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's a great game. At least, at least Actually, number 26 on the list. Mm. Skyrim. Yeah. Guys, introducing Skyrim on the PlayStation 8. <laughs> Another one, like, farther back on 31, again, Jason probably played Baldur's Gate 2, uh, Shadows of Ammon. Uh, that was one that I remember playing with my brother years ago. And it was, it's like, it's, it's essentially like some D&D type stuff. Yeah. In a top-down, sort of like Diablo. Well, like, yeah, it's, I, it's I, like I played Gauntlet old ball. style uh, Forgotten Realms. Yeah. Um, like, I played um, Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate 2 Dark Alliance. Okay. So, like, the Baldur's Gate came out on PlayStation 2, I think, and so did Dark Alliance. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was one of those games where we were supposed to have a third game, and the game never came out. It wasn't popular enough. Yeah. Amazing games. I love the D and D style of those games. I'd go back and, and they were co op, like yeah. same TV yeah. co op. Me so. and Katie would actually uh, during Sunday fun days years and years and years ago. Oh, I remember. Would stay up really early in the morning and just play Baldur's Gate. Mm-hmm. A great, great game. Mm-hmm. One of my little surprises is as low as it is, Half Life. Half Life twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Um, Never played it. Which is it's it's it wasn't like anywhere near being the first first player first person shooter or anything, but it was. It was one of those big ones that everyone played. Very groundbreaking. Yeah, it I changed the genre. It. it was a big deal. Isn't and that then, what started the the portals phenomenon? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it kind of started portals. Valve's little uh, mm-hmm. universe that it has because all their games. Because they are built the connected. engine for Half Life, yeah. and then their engine was so successful that they managed to use their engine to develop other games. Yeah, and now Portal is arguably more successful mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or more well known at least. Yeah. Um, but that but that also came from uh, the Orange Box when Halo 2 came out, mm-hmm. um, which is also on this list. Tekken 3 is also on here. Um, what number is that? Uh, 23. And then Batman Arkham City at 22, which was a okay. fantastic game. The, it was a good game. All the Arkham games mm-hmm. I played were good. There are a lot of Zelda games on this yeah. list. There's uh, Majora's Mask. Mm-hmm. There's uh, a Link to the Past. Yeah. Link's co- Awakening. Yeah, there's a collection for the for like the first three games or something like that. Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite Zelda games of all time. Mm-hmm. Twilight Princess, just yeah. an incredible game, forwards and backwards. See Mass Effect on here. That's Mass Effect Two. Yeah. It's good. Golden Eye is on. Is it number eighteen? Oh. Which is that was another one of the big. Uh, First person shooters that everyone played in that. In that, that was that's generation. the only uh, reason our generation had for sleepover parties. Pretty much, yeah. Like, like if there were Golden Eye, if yeah. four dudes were hanging out overnight at somebody's house, it was because that motherfucker yeah. had one of them had Golden Eye. Yep. yep. And they would go and rent controllers from Blockbuster oh, yeah. and shit, so everybody could play. Yep. Uh, Half Life Two is on here. Yeah. NFL Two K One. This is the the. Second of two football games that are on here. First, One of them being a Madden game too. I don't too. get it. Um, now I played. I'm, I played uh, some some football games here and there, and I enjoyed them, but uh, some of them are just shit. 
You mean like, like it's just a pain in the ass? I I don't believe in playing sports and video games. Yeah. Because I can physically do that in real life no, to an extent. No, yeah, no, you can. <laughs> I can throw a football in and real the, and life. The, and the video game versions of these sports is way more strategy based. It's more yeah. like being the coach or whatever than an actual player. Uh, I think it would be interesting to see a football game that was very specifically based mm. on just the single mm. player and like. How kind of boring that would be to like, yeah. oh, I'm trying to level up my lineman. Like, Which all I do is wait for the snap you, and I hit the guy in front of me. You actually can do that. Um, and uh, there was a game that I had a roommate that played. And that's basically what it was, is you played a particular player through his his uh, college career. And you better hope you're playing like a, a quarterback or, or something that's going to be playing a lot that? because otherwise you're just like, oh, there's that. nothing in this play. Right? And like, yeah. what happens if your coach, like, benches you? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I think, I think I you have a little enough. control over oh. that, but, like... <laughs> They definitely yeah. have some some new games on there. Super Mario Odyssey. That's what I was just looking at. Number, number thirteen. Yeah. Uh, brand new game. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I, I say let's let's take it down from ten. Let's start at ten. We'll take yeah. it down from there, game by game. David Letterman style. So it starts at number ten. Perfect Dark with a ninety-seven out of one hundred yeah. by critics. I remember and, uh, that's that's Xbox, right? That's, that was one of the first Xbox was, games ever. That was on according to this Nintendo sixty-four. Was it Nintendo sixty four? And then they they ported it on the three sixty and Xbox One. Um, and I remember I remember having that. It I remember was sixty four. There it was, was there was one on the Xbox called Xbox or uh, Perfect Dark Zero. Yes. Yep, that's what it was. And I played. I it was started a pale playing that comparison. game. Comparison. And I couldn't get past the first level because I it didn't tell you what to do. Because if it's you just, hadn't played Perfect Dark, a, yeah, then f you. Pretty much. <laughs> and I'd never played. I'd never heard before this game. And I, I remember getting to the first. It's like. Okay, you need to get in that in that in that building. Like, okay, well, I don't have any weapons, and every time I go near that guy, he kills me, and he doesn't move from the door. And there's only so far. Like, it was just I didn't. I I never looked it up or anything. Like, no. I don't know what the fuck to do here. I kind of want to say it was the guidebooks you needed to read. Probably yep. it was the Guide first book. shooter game I remember that I felt like it really involved cover mm-hmm. as a mechanism into. The shooter gameplay, yeah. like you could actually like get behind cover, pop out, and fire. Yeah, uh, well, it was pretty cool. So Number like nine, time cops in the arcade. Time yeah. cops. <laughs> time you, crisis had the pedal four. That would allow yeah. you to like duck, and yep. if you had the pedal down, you couldn't get shot. Yeah, time crisis and uh, time crisis. Yeah, That's it. there's another one that w- that they had at uh, Dave and Buster's called Police Nine One One, and it was a really cool one because w- what the way it would work is. There was motion sensors, and you would actually have to be the cop and move out of the way of the bu- of the incoming bullets and stuff. Oh, you're not and that so fast. It was like, uh, apparently, you I was I did very well at. Um, so you're basically a real police officer at this point. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trained. It's a hell of a workout, like when you're moving around that much on the game. Like, you know. Number nine, Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three. Yeah. I loved all the Tony Hawk. Games. I loved them growing but up. But then yeah. I remember playing those because I was always like a big like oh yeah X Games you know all that stuff and I played the Tony Hawk games and it gives you a really really unrealistic view of how skateboarding works. Uh-huh. Right? Mm-hmm. Like I've been so, grinding for thirty six and a half minutes <laughs> straight, yeah. <laughs> and I can jump forty seven feet into the air and do ninety four tricks. Yeah. Yeah. And my my um, board doesn't snap a lot. Yeah. <laughs> doing a kickflip on the wall. Yeah. Ninety but then you degrees. Watch, then you watch like the X Games and stuff. And you're like, that dude did a kickflip, and everybody cheers. And you're like. Fuck you with your bullshit kickflip. It was just a kickflip. Right. I can't you're kick desensitized. He didn't even awesome. turn it. He didn't even do a 360 ollie. Yeah. Fuck I him. I can do a kickflip that shoots a fireball out. So I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Number eight. This yeah. one uh, I'm currently playing. Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. The yeah. Zelda games, man. Oh, yeah. Zelda have Zelda stands the test of time. Right I right will up. tell you that. Yeah. Uh, I can personally attest. Like, personally you, attest that this game, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, is. Uh, one of the best, um, one of the best games I've played yeah. ever. It's a phenomenal game. Like the amount of depth and like the there's so many different like hidden mechanics mm-hmm. and in your face mechanics mm-hmm. that you have to deal with. And it's really like by region. Like you have a temperature gauge, and you have like so many settings of hot and cold. And 
based on what you're wearing, you can either like start freezing to death or you can catch oh, wow. on fire. Like depending on where you are on the map, you have to change your clothes or drink potions to huh. survive in different parts of the it's map. It's a, a very like like you said about the hidden mechanics. I was just uh, I was in one of the areas that you need like uh, to cool down. Like it's very very hot. You know, fire, lava everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I threw down some food. You know, trying to clear up inventory space, and it cooked on the ground. So like I had raw meat and it was literally cooking on the ground. Like oh okay cool. <laughs> yep. or, I found out that if you <clears throat> are fighting a choo choo, mm -hmm. and they have different uh, like elements, like it's just a little blob monster that has different elements. When you kill them, you get materials mm -hmm. based on which one you fight. Yeah. When you fight a plain one, if you kill it with something electric, you get the electric byproduct. If you kill it with something fire, you get the fire byproduct instead of the plain byproduct. Mm -hmm. There's a, a monster called a, a, a rock, uh, an a rock to rock, which is like a, a rock octorok. Mm -hmm. If you throw rusted weapons at it while it's breathing in to do an attack, it will spit out a better, high quality version of that weapon. Really? Huh. Yeah. Huh. Like just fun little mechanics that you don't yeah. think about that really play a big part in it. If there's a fire on the grass, mm -hmm. creates an updraft. You can jump over with a paraglider, <laughs> fly right into the air. But oh, it cool. has to be like a big fire. Like, it has to be a big like fire. A, like a um, like a field or something. Like, yeah. It can't just be like a little bonfire. Like it's got to be enough to actually reasonably create another. Right. It's, One thing it's I will say about the so open. Yeah, about the Legend of Zelda games is that for a series that has virtually no continuity, mm -hmm. it's done so damn well because almost none of the games connect with any of the other games. And it's not they like Final Fantasy line. where it's an anthological. You know, you're not getting a different story every time. You're still getting the same characters. Link and Zelda are in every. Zelda game. Yeah. Everyone. They wouldn't just make any sense. Play it off as they're just different iterations or forms of them. Because they acknowledge, like in uh, Breath of the Wild, they acknowledge the link from Ocarina of Time. Really? I think so. I think it was. They, they're, they're basically saying they're just reincarnations mm -hmm. of these heroes. Or like, different uh, forms. Like they're reincarnating over and over and over like again. One defeating, billion years goes by on Hyrule. Defeating Ganon over and over and over mm -hmm. again. Like they allude to stories of like, you know, the the princess and her knight that defeated Ganon hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and then you fought him a hundred years ago and now you're back. And like yeah. Or like, you know, when it's uh, great fun. Wind Waker, it's like, here, take these robes. These are what, you know, the hero of you know, time a long time ago, uh, war, and it's you know Link's robes from uh, Ocarina of Time. It's okay. like, like they're all kind of connected, but yeah. not. You know. Okay. Yeah, the next one there's Grand Theft Auto Five, which is the newest Grand Theft Auto to come out. Oh, Amazing nice. game. Which I haven't, I still haven't actually played that game, um, but I've seen re you know there's so much with it, and there's so much cool stuff you and can it's do. The, on it. It's the online multiplayer content that's mm -hmm. keep keeping it uh, uplifted yeah uh, because there is a good deal to do uh, thuggery and thievery and whatnot with your friends and the yeah. online content that's like honestly the only reason I even want to play the game is just for the online stuff because mm. yeah like there's just so much to do in that it's like I don't really care for these characters I just want to go around you know I want to go rob a store, steal yeah. a car or something. I just want to have these powerful weapons and then just do whatever I want. Right. And not only that, but when mm -hmm. you pop out on the online, like you can pop out from robbing a store and there just happens to be another guy who's yeah. in a police chase in a helicopter <laughs> flying by you. Yeah. And you can whip out your bazooka and end that police chase for everybody <laughs> real quick. Or, or, you know, that's like, hey, I don't like that guy. I'm going to put a million dollar bounty on his head. So then every other player is going to be like, that bounty, you say. <laughs> and this basically turns into John Wick. Just, all right, now, <laughs> now we're going to go kill this guy. <laughs> That's cool. Next one, Super Mario Galaxy 2, which uh, apparently better than Super Mario Odyssey. Apparently. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never played any of the Super Mario nope. Galaxies. Never I've, owned a Wii. And then Super Mario Galaxy 1 is actually the number 5, so it's actually <laughs> better, apparently. Wow. So, yeah. So uh, the Galaxies I, are I back I briefly back. played the Galaxy games, uh, or the first one, I think. And it was it was fun. I mean, it's like any of the other, uh, you know, three D Mario games. Like it's you know you have a lot of cool aspects of um, being able to run, you know, upside down, and all kinds of this weird shit. This one's got planets, Dave. Yeah, that's not like all the other three D Mario's. Oh, I'm sorry. You should be. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> um, Soul Calibur, number four. 
which is weird that a tournament fighter is the fourth best game ever, according to this. According yeah. to critics. And and not only that, that, but like the original Soul Calibur, which was out on like the Dreamcast. Yeah. So. But I remember putting a lot of hours into yeah. that game. Um, it was it was fun. Apparently. I never really played in the in the Soul Calibur. I played you know the Mortal Kombat and Street Fighters and Soul Tekken Calibur and stuff Four. Like that. I played a lot of played yeah. a lot of Soul Calibur. But again, that was back during the age when like internet accessibility wasn't what it is today. Mm -hmm. Like you don't just go into a household and expect the Wi-Fi password. <laughs> like back then, you know, you were calling your friends up and having them come over yeah. and play some Soul Calibur or right. play some Goldeneye or some Mario Kart. Let's beat the shit or, out of each or other. Or some Twisted Metal. Oh, that yeah. shit got popular for a year or two. Oh yeah. Cause you know, you you could have a friend come over. And speaking of Soul Calibur... You all like friends. Everybody likes friends. They just recently announced that uh, Geralt from The Witcher is going to be in the newest Soul Calibur. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not going to lie. That's enough of a reason for me to actually want to go check out the game. Right. Yeah. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 4 is number three on the list. So better than five, according to this. Ooh. According to critics. According to critics. According to bank accounts... <laughs> It's number five. Yeah, well, it's because uh, the, the story I feel like was was more real, more mm -hmm. gritty, more involved. Yeah, I feel you like got to attach to one character instead of three. It's also the nostalgia at that point too, because like there was just almost a decade worth of you know Grand Theft Auto Four that everyone's just like, yeah, this is so amazing. I love this, you know. Yeah, because I thought that that was the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I never got into it. I yeah. couldn't, but like. And then uh, another surprise, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is number two on the, nice. on the list. Which, Ooh. again, I love those games. I'm very surprised that it's number so two. high on this list. I mean, they fun and playability and replayability, real high. I feel like what really was doing it for them back then was soundtracks. Oh, yeah. Mm. I feel yeah. like having a dope-ass soundtrack mm. with your video game... That helped a lot for yeah. Tony Hawk. Uh, I mean, that was actually... Speaking of Grand Theft Auto, uh, the, the game that stole Grand Theft Auto's funk and then decided to... Yeah, Saints Row. Saints Row, and yeah. then ran with it and yeah, made their own thing or whatever. Their original uh, Saints Row was like released maybe a month or so after Grand Theft Auto, and mm. and their whole selling point was way better soundtrack. It was way better. There, and, there, there were songs that I found that I heard on that game. I was like, I have to have this song. It was. It was a legit soundtrack. Yeah. But it was like, oh, well, you are definitely ripping off this <laughs> other idea. Right. And which one came first, you don't know. Hmm. It's which one came to market first that yeah. you know. So, But then Saints Row diverged, and it just became just ridiculous. Well, because they got so much heat from stealing the concept hmm. from Grand Theft Auto that they decided, well, rather than just tuck tail and take the loss no. let's embrace what we've done <laughs> go ridiculous and just, they just go and parody yeah. parody every game i personally can. would rather play a game where i can have a gun that uses that weaponizes dubstep and then i can go beat <laughs> someone with a four foot long dildo on a stick yeah that's true <laughs> and they're and they're so much fun to play the 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 saints row games are incredible i went and bought after i i got the what was it the fourth one mm -hmm. for free on like Xbox Live, you know, their game of the month or whatever thing. Mm -hmm. I actually went and got the other games because I had so much fun playing that one. And awesome. all of them were fun. Every one of them is a fun game. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed them. I've definitely The enjoyed only them. drawback is that in the in the fourth game you can fly and you can't do that in one through three. I always have trouble <laughs> backtracking mm -hmm. on features, like backtracking down a series of games because mm. they always add features and cool elements oh, yeah. in the game. So like You'll back to be like, oh, I guess I can't do that anymore, and it right. feels like something's being taken away from you. <laughs> yeah. I try to start at the beginning gone, yeah. if I can. And uh, then the last game, yeah. the very last game, surprise, surprise, Zelda. It's a Zelda game, yeah. Ocarina of Time. It's not Ocarina Cooking Time. Mama. No. <laughs> Now, no time, Peppa for again, you. Ah, was and that was the, the game of the generation. That was the first big sandboxer, right? Um, with, yeah, the, was, with the ocarina and the more, horse, yeah. and mm -hmm. it was the first like 3D one too yeah, for them. That was the one on the on the 64. 
and it was like I said the the game of a generation. Mm-hmm. Um, I went back and replayed it a few years ago on the mm-hmm. 3DS. I mean, it's it stands up. It stands oh, yeah. up to the test of time. Like. Even without the updated graphics, it's just a blast to play. Yep. You get to fight all the dungeons and, yeah. uh, you know. There's people that still know the songs, like the oh, yeah. little ocarina songs you have to learn to open up different things. Like, it's like the kids from our generation that still remember the Contra code. Up, up like, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, select, like start. Yeah, like how to get the 99 lives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like that. The, the Konami code, because it worked on other games, too. Um, but yeah, it's it's just one of those games that you pick it up and you just play it. Like it, yeah. it had so much depth. Like Zelda games have always been known for having a depth to them. Like mm-hmm. even when they're on a Game Boy, like yeah. mm-hmm. the Game Boy version ended up, and it's the only Game Boy version of any game that ended up in the top fifty because it still had that great element of story and depth to it. And Ocarina of Time just took it to a whole other level. Yeah. You no, know, you had the horse, you had the ocarina of all the special songs you could play, capturing Poe's and fairies and jars. And mm-hmm. It's also weird playing other Zelda games after you've played the Ocarina of Time. You, know, you get so used to having the ocarina, and it's so important, and there's other games when it's just not even there. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, oh, that's... I need the boomerang strange. of time in this game. <laughs> we need the Sheikah Slate in Breath of the Wild. Mm-hmm. you got to have the Sheikah Slate. So they always... One... I have no idea what that is. No, you don't. (laughs) It's it's basically... you got to find the bomb sack. It's a tablet. It's an iPhone. you got to find the bomb (laughs) sack. That's what But it's also literally a tablet. (laughs) (laughs) Which is a sack filled with bombs. I don't know why you can't go somewhere else and get a bomb sack. You've got to, like, go to a certain cave, kill a certain certain monster. It's made of a certain material. You can't, like, go get a... Go to the boomerang store. No, i got to go kill a monster. (laughs) You don't want to chase your bombs. Now, see, the one problem that I did have with Ocarina of Time, and I feel like it's a legitimate complaint Mm -hmm. that I have with any game that uses this mechanic, where it limits the size of your wallet. Hmm... You start off, you can't carry more than 99 rupees. Mm. You have to upgrade your wallet to 1,000 rupees. And then you have to upgrade your wallet to 10,000 rupees. Any game that says, I don't care how hard you grind, you're stuck right here until you get the thing I want you to get. Well, didn't Ocarina of Time do that just because you have access to endgame stuff pretty early, but you can't buy it? Like didn't... Yeah, but that like that that was the whole thing. Like mm-hmm. even if it's something as simple as arrows, you can only buy so many. It doesn't matter what you want to purchase. Yeah. You have ninety nine rupees, bitch. Figure it out. I'll give you a third digit later. <laughs> Go get more rupees. See, You're rather have to than that, rather than using that method to slow progression, I I kind of like just having. I think all games should have like a home base feature and all games should have encumbrance so yeah you can carry more than 99 rupees but every you gotta put that shit down somewhere but you gotta you gotta have a bank or something to be able to like keep all of these goods because these these games where you open your inventory and you have just millions and millions of different items things that you've collected different trophies and things and See, that's why I always like the Diablo style of encumbrance, where it wasn't about weight, it was about space. space. Yep. You have this much space to use. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a gamer, Mm -hmm. so I want to be able to carry a lot of shit, and I'm like, oh man, why can't I carry this? I need to be able to carry more. Mm -hmm. But realistically, from a stance of immersion, I can't carry four battle axes in my bag (laughs) while also having ten chicken eggs, (laughs) twenty-five mushrooms, two... Fucking but they three, did eight bows, yeah. like it just doesn't but they work. Did away with that. Hard pieces. In Diablo 3, they do away with that. I borrowed that from yeah, you. They do and, away with that. And they do away with the space uh, representative. Yeah. Uh, and it, and it, I believe it becomes more of a, of a weight thing, mm-hmm. yeah. like a, a number. You can carry 60 anything or yeah. whatever, whether they be battle axes or throwing stars. Yeah, now the encumbrance thing reminds me, of course, of the Bethesda games, Fallout and and uh, Elder, Elder Scrolls. Scrolls, which, of those, only Skyrim was on this list. Mm-hmm. Which is odd to me that, you know, it, you, you didn't see, uh, like, Fallout New Vegas or anything like that. Yep, I'm uh, surprised that are none, of the, none Fallout of the Fallout hit that. Yeah. Uh, A lot of Nintendo. Only one mm-hmm. of the Metroid games made it, and not even, yeah. not even Super Metroid. One. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd expect Super Metroid to be on there, because that's still... 
you didn't get Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy VII. Mm-hmm. Like, this that, was definitely that's a really critics surprising list. that that no one put Final Fantasy VII on there because that people nut themselves over that one all the time. Or well, th- th- I think this right here, this right here, is a more objective list mm-hmm. because it's all based on critic reviews. Yeah. Whereas if you go back, it'll also show you the user rating, mm. and there are some on there that don't make any sense, like mm. uh, Modern Warfare, which whichever one like was the, on there. The critics it had like maybe... a ninety-two, but the user rating was sixty-four mm. compared to other ones like Legend of Zelda that had a uh, a rating of ninety-nine from critics, but a nine point two on user. That makes a little more sense yeah. than like a ninety-two and a six point four. Like right. it's different. We show admiration. It did seem Nintendo heavy. It seemed a little Nintendo heavy. Like Nintendo uh, knows Nintendo how to f- character. They, they they know how to brand their characters and promote them. Yeah, Mario what? and and Link, man. Mario and Link but those sell are the, shit. Those are the characters that Nintendo has: mm. Zelda and Mario and, and Pokemon and, and yeah, anything from Smash Brothers. I'm surprised yeah. Pokemon didn't end up on here at I'm, all. I'm surprised that Smash Brothers was on there. Now, you know None what uh, the kids are playing nowadays? Hmm. Uh, everybody that I know is playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah. And Sea of Thieves is, I want to say, maybe Rare. Is Rare a Microsoft producer? Yeah, uh, I think so. I think uh, so. But it's, it's definitely Microsoft because they're not releasing on PlayStation. Hmm. Uh, it's PC and Xbox One. Uh, and it's basically a sandbox pirate game. Yeah. Uh, from my understanding, the content is a little lacking. Mm. Basically, there's uh, three different factions that you can work for, and one of them has you, like, go off and find treasure. One of them is, like, go and handle some mercantile stuff. And then one of them is, like, go out and kill some ghost enemies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's very limited in that regard. However, everyone seems to be really enjoying the open naval warfare mm. ability and the fact that it's sandbox multiplayer so you can hang out with your friends on your galleon sing songs float your ship around mm. blow up other enemies and if you want to you can sneak over onto somebody else's ship hide out spy on them while they talk amongst themselves, steal their treasure, throw it overboard, uh, jump back onto your ship. You can light kegs of dynamite down in their hull while they're up goofing off on the top deck and blow their ship to smithereens. Damn. There's a lot of basically self-driven fun. Mm. Like they give you this big arena or whatever and then people are just sort of finding their own fun. That's cool. Uh, because Almost like a I true said, sandbox. Like you can actually yeah. do just do whatever you want. Yeah. As long as it's within the physical limitations yeah. of the engine, like you can jump from ship to ship. Mm. Uh, they even have a fire yourself out of a cannon <laughs> thing, which is, you know, kinda takes away from immersion, but it's it's also a neat way to get yourself onto other people's right. ships or whatever and <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't heard too much about it. I did see a video of one, and it's the only thing that really turned me off to it was that it seemed kind of glitchy. Like there was a guy he got he got like picked up from his ship by a leviathan, and he's just the like kraken. standing in the or the kraken, and he's just standing in the mouth of the kraken, and he's just like, ah, uh, and then suddenly he's in the water. Like he didn't fall out. He just now he's in the water. Yeah, he was in and, a place that definitely shouldn't have existed. Yeah, and and then I guess when the the scripting <laughs> moved moved on, right. it was like, hey, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. So it's just, and that's to be expected on some of these big, you know, big games that are trying to do a lot of stuff at once. But you know. but it it seems like a a lot of fun. There's there's a basically like a skull island which is where you know everybody goes and they farm treasure out of it or whatever mm-hmm. and then there's there's the waters outside of skull island where everybody farms the people that are farming the treasures <laughs> on skull island yeah. and so there's like this there's that sort of pve group mm. that just wants to be nautical friends and then there's that pve troll <laughs> 
group that just wants to go out there and mess with people in right. every possible way. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Ethan, some of y'all are familiar with him. He is a character, to say the very least. Uh, he likes to uh, LARP in games like this. So he'll, he'll go and sneak onto someone's ship and then ask for directions <laughs> to like different buried treasure or try to get them to, uh, to join a band because you can play musical instruments and yeah. stuff like that. So he'll try and like, come on guys, I know you know the song and like <laughs> he'll start playing and be like, all right, one, a two, a three, a four. And then they'll shoot him. Generally is what happens is they just kill him. <laughs> Immediately, yeah. but you know, just the fact that you can get onto other people's boats and sort of like, yeah, make scary ghost noises and force them to try and find you or whatever. <laughs> like, that does sound enjoyable. And this is that's mainly PC, right? A uh, PC and uh, Xbox One. Okay. Uh, and of course, this is the early release of it. They aim to continue to put out more and more and more content oh. for it. Uh, more customization, that's more ships. That's you can do ships. with those online games. You can just release something that's kind of just about there and be like, we'll make it better. Just yeah, it starts. It's slightly starts. over beta. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's go ahead and start seeing what kind of capital we can bring in. That'll get more investors on board, and then yeah. we can go full steam ahead. Yeah. Oh, we are... Uh... This has been a full show. Been a full show. Been a full show. Game heavy. Yeah. Very game heavy. I liked it. Yeah. I'll tell you, you know what I learned tonight? What'd you learn? Uh, critics fucking love Nintendo. They love Nintendo. They do. They love Nintendo. Uh, but uh, Nintendo's been in the game for a while. They have. They've been around. See a what long, I did there? In the game. Yeah, good one. Uh, Jason, what'd you learn? I learned that uh, apparently there were multiple 3D Mario games that I never enjoyed because I skipped a couple generations <laughs> of Nintendo. Yeah. Yep. All right. Justin, what'd you learn? That uh, I have played a staggeringly few number of games on this list. Yeah. I played a good number of Was them. Mario Kart on this list? Nope. nope. Well, how dare they? How dare they? And I learned that Jeremy Adam could not hold his bladder and he had to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like one more minute, man. I think would you rather have, you know, yes. kiss on the floor? Yes. Well, we already have to get Carlos in here cleaned up because it's Jason's screw up. Yeah. What'd you learn tonight? That uh, critics are biased. <laughs> Super Metroid wasn't even on there, man. I'm sorry. Super man. Metroid got a bum ass deal. <laughs> the needle was cooking, yeah. mama. <laughs> the needle yeah. was cooking, God. Burger time? Come on. Um, and so dash. many cooking models too. We There's hashtags? plenty to choose from. Exactly. Nope, not a one. Not a one. Hashtag nope. not a one. What about the babysitter one? What's that one called? It's like Cooking Mama, but with your babysitter instead of cooking. No fucking idea. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, and that's the problem. They do need more games that are uh, just basically like running a business, but in a video game form. Like that uh, that game that was about designing your own pizza restaurant, or whatever. I think it was called Pizza Restaurant. Uh, it might have been called. It might have been called Pizza Restaurant. But yeah. you basically like buy or or lease footage in like a borough, okay. and then you have to like design your tables layouts and and build your menu. And it's pretty much. Well, you got Roller Coaster Tycoon. You're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like those those Zoo kind of Tycoon. Yeah, yeah. Tycoons. Yeah. That pretty much brings us to the end of the show. Tower Thanks tycoon. to our our newest patron, Les. Thanks for your help. And uh, less is more in my book. That's true. And your sticker is going to be in the mail pretty soon if it isn't already. You might already have it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, if you want to be a patron, you can go to Patreon.com/slash TalkieBox. And help support the this show and all the other endeavors that we do. What's the what's the lowest amount they can give to the show? I think it's a dollar. A dollar, yeah. like what? A month? A dollar a month. A, dollar. a yeah. dollar a month. Yeah. I mean, if you're watching this, it's worth a dollar a month. A dollar a month. You wouldn't even notice. What does that dollar get them? That will get them a big thank you from us here on the show. That's mm -hmm. not worth it. Big, thank you. <laughs> big, big thank you. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll say your name mm -hmm. uh, at least once. Yeah. yeah, 
Five dollars a month gets you gets you that and a sticker and some behind the scenes footage, which I still haven't made. Now let's hope we don't blow up too much because if we get a whole bunch of dollar donators, mm -hmm. we're gonna spend a whole show just listing them off. Yeah. Here is the dollar segment. <laughs> Twenty two dollars gets you a, an awkward in studio lap dance <laughs> from Jason. Yeah, but you have to pay for the gas to get here. Yeah, for yeah, we're not ticket. like flying you in. And he expects tips. That's true. <laughs> anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Check Depends us out on, on Facebook tip. and Twitter, and <laughs> and uh, hit up our Patreon. Other than that, anything else? Nah. Now, if you got something to say about video games, uh, the list that we gave, something we might have missed, a video game that you think is tits up, uh, and we, you want to bring it up, bring it up to us, and we'll talk about it on another episode. That's right. All right. Good, Good night, night everybody. everybody. Good night.